Welcome to Look Behind the Look, the celebrated podcast that explores your favorite looks in film, television, and fashion history. Through conversations with the fashion world's elite and award-winning hair, makeup, and costume designers on sets around the world, you will see and hear exciting tales from behind the scenes, career origin stories, and tons of advice and tips. I'm your host, Tiffany Bartok. Hey, everybody. Welcome to Look Behind the Look, Season 5, Episode 2. I know, Season 5. It's crazy, and we've got lots of new stuff. If you missed the last episode, be sure to check it out. I talked about some of the new stuff that's happening, and I'm doing the Substack. I'm hitching on to the Substack train. I've been writing on there for a while, and, and people are really loving our bite-sized episodes. I've been making them with Kelly Riley, and we have a great one coming up about Xanadu. And the reason I'm bringing it up before it comes out is because when I reached out about an interview for the Xanadu bite-sized episode, episode, I reached out to Martin Samuel, who did all the hair design for Xanadu, and he sweetly got back to me and said, oh my God, I'm so excited to talk about Xanadu. It should be a whole episode. And so I agreed, of course. So I do have today an entire episode about Xanadu with Martin, and then that will be followed by the bite-sized episode that goes a little bit more into the costumes and the way the film was received, the way the film um, was developed, and more. So today you're going to hear all about Xanadu and Olivia Newton-John and all the hair designs, and then we'll get more into it with the bite-sized episode coming up. It was such an honor to talk to Martin. He's an absolute legend. If you are listening to this podcast, you know all of his movies and you probably know all of his credits, but I will remind you because there are many accolades to go over here. He is a three-time Oscar and BAFTA nominee for Pirates 1, The Curse of of the Black Pearl, Pirates 2, Dead Man's Chest, Pirates 3, At World's End. He's Oscar and BAFTA nominated for the motion picture Hitchcock, a Lifetime Achievement recipient given to him by the Hollywood Beauty Awards in 2015, and a Lifetime Achievement recipient for the Local 706 Makeup Artists and Hairstylist Guild in 2020. He's an icon and a legend and responsible for some of the most beautiful looks in film history, like Evita, The Man Who Fell to Earth with David Bowie, Burlesque, Blow, Angeline, Enough, Coal Miner's Daughter, Wild Wild West, so many more. And I can't wait for you to hear this conversation where I gush over Martin and his amazing work on Xanadu. Enjoy. Open your eyes and hear the magic. Universal Pictures announces the most dazzling romantic musical fantasy in years. Xanadu. Starring Olivia Newton-John. Michael Beck. And Gene Kelly. Hello, Martin. Oh, my goodness. Hi, hi Tiffany. Hi, how are you? I'm good. I, I am thrilled to be talking to you today because as I reached out, I'll just tell everyone that I, um, my uh, Kelly, who works on these little um, featurettes with me called the Bite Size Episodes, we were like, let's do Xanadu next. And I said, oh, no, I, I know who did the hair for Xanadu. And then I reached out to you and you so graciously agreed to talk to me about yeah. Xanadu. That's and then great. we, you and I realized that there's just too much. I, we're going to do, this is going to be its own episode. And then we'll also have a Bite sized episode, maybe on a little bit more of the um, costumes and things like that of Xanadu as well. So People should watch both. Absolutely. absolutely. Okay. Because we're going yeah. to go absolutely in depth about the hair. We're talking about Xanadu yeah. today, which is quite an ambitious project to say the least. I'm certain that my audience has all seen Xanadu. I just rewatched it this week and I was just watching a couple documentaries that I'll put in the show notes about it. Um, and I, I, I have to, I want to know, just from, let's start from the beginning about Xanadu. When did you meet this project? Well, it was like a kind of um, double situation. I just came back. I, I just kind of got myself together in LA in 1978. We decided to come live here. 
and um, and I worked very hard at getting into the union because you have to get into the yes. union and all those things. And anyway, I got a chance to do a movie, um, Coal Miner's Daughter. Oh, I got all my days um, that I needed for my union to be oh, okay. Coal so miners. I came back, came back to LA, and um, um, and our very very close best friend was Rona Newton John. No. He was our best friend from England. And she came to LA because she, you know, Livy got so big. And, you know, one day she said, I'm going back, I'm going to LA. Uh, Olivia wants me to go and live there. She's just done Greece. It's all gone crazy. And so I'm going to go to LA and bye bye and see you. So then we came to LA. Nothing to, you know, not because she had, because right, right, right. I wanted to work in Hollywood. My dream was to work on a Hollywood musical. Oh, was it? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. That's if you read any of my bios, it's like that was one of my dreams. You know, I used to watch those movies on TV, all those wonderful Hollywood music musicals. And one day I'll do it. One day I'll be like Sidney Guilleroff, mm. who was a fantastic hairdresser. Yes. And did all those movies. So anyway, um, uh, I got my 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 union ticket and Rona said to me, Olivia's doing a new film. I'd met Olivia, like, oh. socially, because of being Ro Rona's best friend. And she thinks that you would be great to do the hair. So it was at Universal. I just got my ticket at Universal, and it all worked out. And so, so Cole Miner's daughter was at um, Universal. Yeah, so Universal. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. So I got all my union stuff together, and I was able to run a movie. You know, you have to Amazing. kind of get that whole sort of thing together yes so it was amazing you know and I met uh, Larry and Joel and, and and they signed off on me and so you know I was good to go and that was it so that's wonderful how, that's how that's how it happened that's how you got there and 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 then were you Olivia's personal or did you no I was the, I was like it was, the I, department I was personal but mm -hmm. I was also the department head designer yes okay. so yeah, so I looked after her totally. Yes. And, uh, and then, you know, oversaw everything else that was going on and kind yes. of did see people that I could manage to squeeze in with her and not interrupt any time with her. Yes, so, yes. And, yeah. and, and being that this was your goal to work on a Hollywood musical, to have Gene Kelly in you, uh, yeah, was it yeah. intimidating? Were you just like dreams come no, true? No. Well, no. not really. I mean, I had come, you know, I had a terrific um i mean I, I don't want to blow my trumpet but i had a very good resume when i came to la you, you can all the you movies can do that England. here you can you so can I brag here confident, but of course gene kelly was an absolute yeah. you know i mean enigma so yeah it was very exciting very exciting at the thought of him being in the movie yes yes you know um uh my 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 main joy and concern was doing the Hollywood musical yes. and all the different scenes and all the different yes. Joel was just so he was the one that was kind of like you know Joel Silver was like yeah. that was like really you know into it and pushing and saying that really I have this stage and we're going to have this and we want this and the clothes and the hair and this so anyway it was all very exciting and um but my main concern really was Livy and, and and all the styles and everything that would go with her because Jean was Jean, but he was you know there was no look, there was no, you know what I mean. There was yes, no exactly more of the costumes. Mm -hmm. was, so he was just to be looked after, made sure that he was sure. looking great. But you know, it wasn't sort of a big creative job as it was kind of with Olivia and the rest of the, all the dancers and all the different scenes and all the different moods and so you know. That that's my next question is so Joel Silver had a huge vision yes. for this, but did the budget correspond with that? How how was the budget on this film? Was it challenging or did you have everything I at your feet? Kind of, I, I I never had a You never had a problem. I never had a problem. I never Wonderful. had a problem. I mean I don't think it was an enormously it was done in a very um reasonable way. Right. Mm -hmm. And, you know, those were the kind of golden years of Hollywood. Yeah. I mean, 1980, do you know what I mean? It was like, we were a lot on location. We had some like stuff at Universal on sound stages. We had another big sound stage in Hollywood. But then we were kind of like, you know, the Pan Pacific building, you know, the, the, you heard of the Pan Pacific building? Yes. Everyone, 
all the fans love the Pan Pacific. Yes. That building that they use the outside of, and that was going to be the club of Xanadu. It's so amazing. Had, yeah. You know what it reminds? Have you ever been to Disney to the Hollywood studio? It looks just like that. And I always wonder if it's secretly it's a replica. <laughs> It yeah, it may be. I'll have to look. I'll have to look. It's just, yeah. it's gone now though, yeah? No, no, it's still oh. there. It's oh. still there in the Pan Pacific Park. Oh, it's wonderful. completely empty, but it's just still, it's it's a national, I mean, they couldn't knock they it can't, down. They can't knock it down. Okay. It's architecturally protected. Oh, wonderful. So we used this, you know, uh, exterior and then interior was like, that was supposed to be where the club was, but it yep. wasn't, it was in the studio. But um, yeah, and then, you know, Venice Beach. Yes. A lot, you know, where, you know, um, Sunny, you know, sees the mural and everything like that. Muses all come out. A lot of skating stuff down there. A lot of stuff in Malibu. A lot of stuff in um, Malibu and, uh, um, yeah, all, all around, all yeah. around the so it was kind of very reasonable, I suppose. It wasn't a massive, a massive um, amount of money. It wasn't a massive. Okay, it was yeah. comfortable, and everybody seems yeah. comfortable. Yeah, I, oh, very. I, I noticed that no, there are no complaints about that. Like you know, uh, the costumes, and nobody was saying we didn't have any money, and we had to oh. put it put it together. So that's wonderful that you guys could really play had a problem no we know I never no, no one ever came up to me and I had a lot of help a lot of a big a big team of hair and makeup people. yes tell me how how the department what you remember about assembling the department well I had my one you know um my my key who was this wonderful girl who's not here anymore beautiful friend Candy Connery yes yeah she was my she was my 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 key yes and so you know we worked together on that and then I had like you know, certain times, like maybe 20 hairdressers coming in. Really? On the big days when we had all the, you know, the dancers and everything in and the roller skaters. Yeah. All yeah. that stuff, you know. Um, uh, and maybe even a few more and make up the same. I mean, they had, you know, we had a big setup with. Wonderful. Know, it was great. It was great. Wonderful. And, um, yeah. So I, we, I assembled, you know, I, I relied a lot on Candy to get the, the people. You okay. Know, the, hair and makeup people because I was kind of this was my first picture in in a, in Hollywood in LA right so I just done coal miner's daughter that was all so in, different it, it was all in Tennessee and, and yeah. Kentucky so you know I hadn't actually I'd done a few days and things in the studios here but I didn't know all the people so right Andy helped out and or lots of hair and makeup people came in, which I remained friends with and worked on other, they worked on other pictures. I for love me that. To that. And yeah, no, it was great. It was great. We had a great crew. And for shooting those huge production numbers, do you remember, you obviously did the eras in, in a certain order. Do you remember how many days per era it would take? No, no. I can't honestly remember mm -hmm. this. Uh, you know, it's like <laughs> a long time ago. Yeah. So yeah, no. Um, we had some pretty early crazy calls, as you do. You yeah, know, yeah. Ready, and I would even though I would only, you know, I would oversee everything and maybe do one or two people. Uh, I was always there at the beginning. You know, even yeah. though a would be coming in until eight thirty or or sure. Something. So I was always around for 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 everything until from beginning to end of the day. Yeah. Did you have a favorite era that you enjoyed working on the most? I saw that you were doing Liberty Spikes on some of the yeah. in the punk stuff crazy. and Just yeah, crazy styles that we create yeah. on these, you know, and all that sort of thing on Leroy and mm -hmm. uh, you know all the all the great fun, fantastic styles. It was just really great. Yeah, um, we sh there was this wonderful um, big kind of. Uh, emporium dress shop type place in Beverly Hills called Fiorucci. Gene Kelly was just telling this story about Fiorucci. Yes. Tell me, tell me. And that's where we filmed a lot of that, or a lot of his stuff, you know, his dancing and stuff like that. When he comes out with the dancers, the dancers are all in the window and they come alive and then they go in and the whole thing, you know, so we filmed a lot in there in Fiorucci. Um, a lot of those crazy, crazy, 
look looks. You know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. My favorite, my favorite, my favorite. I mean, I love the end scene, you know, with Olivia. Of course, yeah. And I, do, I just love that, you know, and that hair was just, you know, she said, let's just do something completely different. You know, we both said together, we're going to do something completely different for this, you know, because of the all the lovely pretty style that she had, you know, with the ribbons and yeah. her Kira style. Her yeah. Kind of thing. And so, you know, I gave her a massive haircut and we just let it go. And that was that beautiful style at the end. For you caught it. I, yeah. I was, I'm very curious about that last look because it's so beautiful. It's so effortless. And to me, there's something about her performance that's quite different too. Yeah. She's just so relaxed and just like flowing. Well, uh, she was glowing because, you know, she met, I mean, everyone knows I'm not telling stories out of school, whatever, but you know, she met Matt, yes. Matt one of the dancers and, um, and they just kind of clicked. They right. fell in love on Xanadu. They fell in love on Xanadu. And um, so it was quite a way through the movie. And really, we had to, we mm. close people with Olivia, her little team, yeah. her little entourage, had to keep this a secret. It wasn't something oh. that anybody to know. He's so private. Yeah. He had to keep it private. So, um, you know, um, it wasn't until the end that really Olivia could let that shine out. Oh, wow. Shows, it, I mean, I watched that scene and I can see how, you know, she was just so glowing because it was fine. It was out. They were together. And, you know, that was, that was, that was a beautiful thing. Yeah. Oh my goodness. Because they didn't want to hinder the production. And so they waited and then, but then they, they, and then while... all the other dancers and all, not just production, but just of course. the whole thing that, yeah. that wasn't a good idea, you know, things like that are never a yeah. good idea. So yeah. keeping it from, you know, just keeping it cool. That's really neat because, yeah, she's she's definitely so free. And it's just like, really, I mean, you, you talk about the grease, uh, you know, like how much fun it was, but it's still a tight performance. This was, and this was just so loose and relaxed. And I noticed that her hair is slightly like crimped. And I wanted to ask you about that. Um, I, it's it's such a, a silly detail, but I, I said to my husband, I'm like, I've got to ask him about that yeah. because it's like slightly crimped. And I wondered if like, it was on purpose that way, or if it was like um, you decided on a different hair. Well, it was the way it was cut. Yes. Was okay. Cut. And so it was kind layered. of layered. It was very, very layered. It was this kind of lion cut. Yes. That you pushed all your hair forward and then you cut it around and you flung it all back and then right. you know, it through. So it was that kind of very, very layered cut. And it was partial, partial air dry, partial blow dry. So okay. You, so it wasn't that kind of um, crisp, blow-dried look. Do you know what I mean? It still yes. had the big buoyancy and the air through it and the, all the layers could move. Yes. You know? So yes. that's kind of how that, why it looked like that. And it, it worked beautifully. It worked, and the, the way it moved and she moved and yes. the whole thing was great. We, I mean, there was no wind machine on her or anything Right, like right, right. Keep it going. Um, so it was, it was just the... It was just great. Can but you she, imagine but, now if they did this? Like, can you imagine how highly stylized? It's so wholesome and like, you know, it, it's just such a sweet film. Yeah. And now it would be so, I just was kept imagining what's the, when's the day that somebody announces a Xanadu redo and we all start screaming. and it would be great. It would be <laughs> yes. great. Yeah. You think it would be or good? They, and yet, or they could kind of, well, they can't now because obviously- Olivia's gone but you know at one time they could have you know re-released it with adding bits in oh, it yeah. or whatever but they I never, agree they never yeah. did that was that yes yeah. were you surprised when you saw how the film was received when it first came out what 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 did what did you guys well, think? it wasn't received all that well as you right. know right yeah. yeah so yeah. were you so, did that surprise you or did you not care how did you feel about it um I thought it was a bit unfair. Yeah. Um, it was that kind of um, period of time, you know. Um, there was a couple of different Hollywood musical movies coming out. Yes. Uh, what's the name of that one that was 
uh, Can't Stop the Music. Yep. And one from the heart. And that was the big one. Can't mm. Stop the Music. And that Can't was... Stop the Music. Mm -hmm. So I, when Xanadu came out, it just missed that thing. You know, it was like, I don't know. I mean, I just thought some of the, you know, some of the, I mean, the, some of the dance numbers are fantastic. Yes. Yes. Yeah. I, I did hear that Gene Kelly was so upset that, that they didn't get his legs because he did the roller skating and he wanted to show off that he was doing all this roller skating mm -hmm. <laughs> and he was so flawless at it. And, and they, they cut right. him off at the, cut him off at the middle. Yeah. Um, but, the, but the primo thing was his, him and Livia's uh, 1940s sequence. Tell me about that look and how you came up with it and did you replicate it? And why well, it was very, you know, it's a, a, a real classic 1940s look for Livia yes. with, with the with 1940s hair and the hat and the, you know, the whole so outfit. So perfect. Perfect. And that was many weeks, because he directed it. Gene directed that. Uh, he insisted on directing that scene. Wow. Uh, that whole rehearsal, we re they rehearsed for about two weeks. It was oh, a big, wow. Olivia was really, really nervous. Yes, about she that. She was? But yeah, she wanted to get it absolutely perfect, you know, but she was doing this solo number with oh Gene Kelly. God. I mean, that was a big... And da and dancing, I love her so much, but yeah, dancing's just, not her strength. Yeah, it was an intense, you know, choreography. Yes. Um, if you look at that, you know, it was really, you know, she had to be on the ball yes. the whole time. So there was a lot of rehearsal and uh, it, the shooting, I think we shot over about four or five days. Oh, wow. Yeah, something like that. So, oh, wow. yeah, it was beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. So yeah. he choreographed it and directed it. So that's very wonderful. I, I didn't I didn't know that. Was yeah. he was he difficult or no? No. He's no. just like set in his ways. And yeah, he was just. Yeah. 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 Um, yeah. He, he, he was kind of. Gene Kelly. He didn't have a lot to do with the dancers. You know, he didn't kind of, the, some, loads, all the dancers kind of like felt that they wanted to, that he would sit in the middle of them talk uh -huh, about uh -huh, uh -huh, uh -huh. and, you know, I be see. one of the dark, you know what I mean? But uh, yeah, it he didn't happen like that. He was more kind of, you know, I don't know how he felt or what he was going through or whatever. Yeah. But he didn't do that number and they were kind of a bit disappointed. They Got it. Was, he was going to kind of be one of the community of all these fabulous, you know, dancers. In ah, that's very yeah. interesting. But everything worked out beautifully. There was it no sure bad did. feelings or anything like that. But that that was one thing that I do remember, you know, that they yes. have him sitting around and talking about, you know, this movie or that movie. I did this and it was wonderful. And oh, tell us about it. Da -da -da -da. Yes. Of course. And he was like, I'm here to work. And yes, uh huh. Like reserving yeah, his energy. Stuff. He took it very seriously. It's yeah. Great. Yeah. Yeah. I remember him. Uh, he he was saying that he was when he signed on to the project, he was like, I'm not going to dance. And I can't I can't imagine being the producer and being like, OK, so. Um, <laughs> but then Kenny Ortega convinced he said I will because he he trusted Kenny. Thank yeah. God. Um, that's so funny. There's this um there's this footage of Olivia at the rap party and she's in a circle dancing to Michael Jackson. And um it was just it's such a beautiful thing where she's just letting loose and she's standing there in a group of people. Did did you did you attend the rap party? Do you remember yeah. it? Was yeah. it it was at Xanadu set, the Xanadu set. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Oh, how much fun was that? Was it, was it like, I saw there was a red carpet, but they didn't show any footage of the film. They were just celebrating. Yeah. 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 I actually escorted Olivia to oh. the premiere. Wonderful. Where was the premiere? And you know, that was August 8th, which is tomorrow. I didn't know. I didn't remember that. I, didn't... I just saw the number and I thought, wait a minute. But where that, where it was. But it was a great big theater, you know, cinema. Sure. Great big, yeah, I can't remember where it was in town somewhere. But she didn't feel it was cool for her to go in to go with Matt on sure. the red carpet. The thing. So she said, "You've got to do it. You've got to do it." So 
of course I did it and then I just kind of as we got to into the foyer I walked off to the side and Matt came in and, and they sat together I think oh yeah. my gosh I love that uh, that was uh, that was and not, at the premiere the o- the audience enjoyed it at the premiere of course of course yes it was just after when oh. everybody ripped it to shreds <laughs> yeah <laughs> oh my, my goodness favorite we were talking about that before my favorite favorite scene and the mm-hmm. favorite getting ready for everybody I mean there's so many yes. and all the different hair and all the different you know styles and periods so many but, you know the scene that with the tubes you know when the oh tubes, yes when the, when the two stages come together yes that whole that was amazing it tell was, me how that was shot we shot that in hollywood i think it was some hollywood central studio mm-hmm. some studio down there and um which we shot a lot of and um it, it was it was you know Joel's big kind of dream thing to have this this scene and talked about it a lot before it happened and of course it was just great it was just beautiful I mean it took quite a few days to do it sure but yeah. you know so many different hair looks so many different the Andrew sisters looking three you know singers and and then all, all the different you know the tubes and their whole number and well but you did you did them separately no you did the Andrew sisters um shot oh, and they, they, they were they were cameos within the day got it right 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 they were all on the stage together you but know, there was, was a edgy look to the andrew sisters it wasn't oh, pure fantastic. yes so how did you find that mix well i just love 1940s that's just my whole at that time anyway yeah. I said 1940s, but at that time it was like my you know my big thing that 1940s. oh that was it yeah and so you know that's what we modeled them on we modeled yeah. them you know, with Bobby Mannix, you know, the costume designer. Yes. So we kind of like worked it out that that's what the look was going to be. And, you know, the song and it was great. It, it just worked out a dream. Snoods at the back and, you know. Yes, 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 yes. And then for the punk looks, where did you find them? Did you find them on real people? How? What was the in- inspiration of those? A lot of, a lot of uh, reference pictures. Yeah. And um, a lot of the guys would go out and get colors done and things like that. Yeah. You know, a lot of coloring, but also a lot of people kind of like helped out and they would go and get some color or they'd put the color in themselves and then we'd kind of dress it all out in the mornings. Um, and yeah, we did a lot of research about that. A lot of research. In that time, wh- how was color done? Because we weren't in Manic Panic yet or anything like that. So how was the pop, how were the pops of color created punk so it was beginning of all kind of pure color yes being available right it was the beginning to those that knew where to get it if you know what i mean it wasn't like like now you go online there was nothing like that going on in those days as you can as you know so yeah i mean and the dance community knew and they know more and they did then of where to get stuff and where to go and what little shop would do it or do you know what I mean? It was like an in thing because it was all so new. Yes. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Oh, I love that. Yeah. So I love the idea of it being a secret. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we all work together. I mean, mm. we all dancers and the whole hair, makeup, dancers, you know, we all worked so closely together to get the, it was so exciting. They loved it and uh, they wanted to help out. So, right. every, you know, we all worked at it together. Did you ever see Xana do the musical? Never. Never. No, yeah. No, I never saw it. Yeah. yeah. It was made in LA. It's, it, I think it did come, to, it did go on tour, I believe, right? Yes, it did. Yeah. yeah but um, I think just like, like not, you yeah. know, a big Maybe tour. Maybe I was out of town on location or something. Yeah. I think if I just, if it had been somewhere, you know, I, I, I would have gone to see it here. Yeah. 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 Of course. Of course. Yeah. Um, tell me a little bit about Olivia, just, I mean, because you were so close. I, and I, I mean, I don't need to tell you that I grew up, I idolize. I mean, I have pictures of myself posing a, like her album. I'll have to find her album covers. And she was always on the turntable at home and she's so beloved by the world and, and myself. And so my, I just want to, I would love to hear about your relationship with her and 
really tell people how special she was. As I said, you know, I mean, we 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 met because of Rona. Yes, you know, her beloved sister. Yes, um, who's also, you know, she passed away at least five six years before Libby. Right. And so, um, you know, then I met Livia. We did the film. Uh, the whole our friendship started, and it never ended until wow. she passed away. We were very close friends through all the uh, ins and outs of her life, you know, when she spent a lot of time. My, my wife and her were very close. Um, we were kind of in, a, in that kind of inner sanctum of, of, of being yes. friends. Yeah. And, um, you know, went through all the, uh, the, the dodgy years, you know, towards the end. And, yeah, I mean, we were very close. She was adorable. She was always adorable. Yeah, I mean, she was just a great person. We had a great friendship. I was reading in her biography this morning about Xanadu, and I was just, just as you are speaking about, she had nothing bad to say about it. Like, you know, she was just, you know, this was, these are the great things that they brought me. They brought me Matt, that Xanadu brought me Matt and great friends, and that I still have. And, you know, yeah. She she didn't talk about any golden raspberries or anything. And the music, I mean, please, oh. the track is a great big hit for her. Incredible. The music is fantastic, and it has Incredible. gone on forever and will go on forever. Yes. I mean, the yellow, I mean, forget it. Yes, I mean, the whole thing was so exciting. You know, you know, working and 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 listening to the playback, you know, the, of the ELO and 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 her songs and her music and. You know, she got very. She would get very emotional about when she sung suddenly, and when she was, you know, doing all these beautiful numbers that she did through the movie. You know, um, do you, have you ever seen Akira Halloween costume? I've never. I I was thinking about it now. <laughs> maybe somebody should do one. I think I might this year. I think you heard I it here, folks. Maybe I should do the Kira wig. Yes. <laughs> the question is, which Kira? Of course, you know. Uh, well, well, but as you. As I've learned through you, there's Kira, yes, and then these other looks. Well, then there's all the other looks. Yeah. I mean, I still got, you know, this is my my script. <gasps> I still have with all, because in those days we used to cut Polaroids. We used to put, like shape them and do all this crazy stuff, which is a shame that yes. they're not in there. I know. Tennis. But this is what we did. That's that. <gasps> oh, let me see, Martin. Put Pull it up a little bit. Okay. That's one, you know. So. Oh, shoot. It's cutting it off on the bottom. I want to see every, everything. Oh, uh, my uh, God. Yes. Oh, uh, look at this one. Okay, Martin, what? Tell me about this. Uh, down. Take your hand and put it down. And then right here with that contour, that, that heavy contour next to her. Um, next to her. One, what is that? That one? Yeah. Uh, it's kind of like um, a 1940s folded up with oh, a flower. I yeah. love. Yes. But there, <gasps> there's all sorts of incredible things going on oh, here. Oh, my goodness. Yeah. And, and this is an original a, script? Oh, yeah. Yes, yeah, my original script. It's falling apart because um, I've kind of looked at it. There's Michael... There's Kira as Kira. Yes. Ah. <gasps> um. More sort of also, you know, I I I need to kind of clean it up and put plastic on every. No. Page. Oh, well, yes, of course, it should be in a vault, of course. Of course. But, but this anyway. braid, this braid, I love that detail too. I I'll never forget it. That is it a barrette that you put on Kira? That sort of, it's so sweet. That was a huge it's trend. Ribbon. You the ribbon that yeah, became they, a huge they, trend. Yeah, they were just like um on a comb, you know, yeah. on a side of comb. And, right. Uh, and the and the material was weaved over the top and then the tails. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Oh my yeah. gosh, I remember that so uh, well. Yeah. I See. remember doing that. Yeah. Well, and you they're... tucked you tucked it in and then the ribbons and you did it only on one side. Yes. Oh yes. Yeah. Oh my God. Isn't that exciting? 
Oh, the makeup. Oh, look at it all piled up so sweetly on the top. Yes, that's the edge. That's the end. Is this the Andrew sisters here? No, 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 no. Okay. Andrew sisters was previous. I couldn't tell the coloring um, on the costumes. And um, the, the Xanadu finale kind of thing. The, those hats. Oh, I know. Rachel. Oh, my God. Yeah, you know, true. we need to redo this film we, we with the same people. We have to get in a time machine. I want it to be the same yeah. people. I just want it to be a different, like, cinematographer because I want it to be m more detailed. <laughs> we did all these crazy scenes, you know, with all these. Oh, God. Look at this. Yeah. I mean, these these looks and defined. Sand and this and is nine. Sandal Bergman, you know, she yes. was the, the lead. You know, she was fat. She was kind of. The number one muse. She was great. She yes. was a fantastic dancer. Yeah. Yes. Yes. <gasps> Absolutely stunning. Oh my God. Thank yeah. God you have those Polaroids. Um, yeah. Yeah. I do. Yeah. Yeah. So. Yes. Oh yeah. my goodness. Yes. Yes. Eventually, I'll let. I'll. I'll most probably um, decide to. Um, donate that to the Academy Museum. The Academy Museum. Yes. Mm -hmm. That's where they oh. go. Yeah. They, 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 it'll go there eventually. Okay. Yeah. 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 Oh my goodness, Martin! I loved talking to you about everything. Is there anything else that you're burning to tell me about Xanadu? Everything, really. I mean, um, yeah. I mean, uh, Michael Beck was adorable. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I was surprised it wasn't Rex Smith, but I, looking back, I wondered how old Rex was at the time. But Michael Beck, where did they find him for this? Oh, I honestly, I don't know. I mean, Michael and I became became close friends, and and our, and his wife. And, Wonderful. Uh, yeah, and um, but he, yeah, I don't know. He just did that. He did one film, I think it was called Warriors. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and um, and they chose him. I mean, he looked adorable. I mean, he yes, was, he was the epitome of that nineteen eighties look with the hair and the thing. And yes. The, the boy from Venice so that's most probably what they were looking you know what where they went with him yeah so, he definitely had the look down so there's so many stories Martin you're so cool I'm, I'm sorry to keep going on about it well just, please do not I'm so I'm I'm okay. sorry to keep as I keep I keep uh oh. trying to to wrap you up but there's just no way to do it I don't want to <laughs> the first day that we went on set with Madonna on Evita it was a, you know, it was a, a, a camera test with uh, her classic hair and she wore the, the uh, Eva Peron long mink coat and it was a pine wood. And they played back Don't Cry For Me Argentina. And it was the first time we'd been, well, <laughs> it gives me the shivers now because sure. this, it was, unbelievable i mean there wasn't um, everybody did their stuff the cameras we know everybody was but everybody was absolutely in awe and she was miming and the soundtrack was going and it was oh. those moments when you never forget you know what i mean yes epic moments when what a gift what a gift anyway that's a whole nother story ah <laughs> uh, is this this is your cliffhanger. This is what you're doing. You're 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 giving me a cliffhanger. <laughs> oh, Martin, I'll let you go for now, but that is not I'm not going to let you go for long. Okay. Okay. Thank okay. you so much for talking. It's been great. I really loved it. And uh, I hope you've got lots of nice stuff with Livy and uh Xanadu. Yes. Yes. Look Behind the Look is a Vinyl Foot production, written by me, your host, Tiffany Bartok, produced by Jace Bartok, edited by Mugresh Tekor. If you're interested in learning more, find our video version on the YouTube channel, Look Behind the Look Podcast. There you can see rare photos and clips from our guests. And please follow us on Twitter at Look Behind Pod and Instagram at Look Behind the Look. If you like the show, please rate, review, and subscribe. And tell your friends and spread the word. You can subscribe to us on iTunes or any podcatcher of your choice. Thanks for listening to Look Behind the Look.